Hey there, welcome back to Geeky Greenhouse. Today I'm going to talk about different nutrient deficiencies in plants and how you can identify them based off the leaves. As a gardener or a home grower, paying attention to your plant's leaves is very important. It's one of the easiest ways to tell whether your plant is struggling or under some sort of stress. You can use the leaves of your plant as a starting point to help determine whether your plant may have a nutrient deficiency. But before I get into that, there are a few very important things I want to mention. There are many different factors that can cause visual symptoms in your plant's leaves that will closely resemble a nutrient deficiency. Environmental conditions like drought or pest damage or exposure to different herbicides or pesticides are all various things that can stress your plant and alter the appearance of your plant's leaves. In addition to that, many nutrient deficiencies look very much alike. So it is very difficult to identify a nutrient deficiency based solely on the appearance of your plant's leaves. And we always recommend getting a soil test for proper diagnosis in the home garden. It's also worth noting that you're more likely to have a nutrient deficiency with container plants or house plants that you may be growing inside because plant roots are very good at searching the soil and getting the nutrients they need in the garden. So if you notice your plant's leaves turning yellow and you've already ruled out all other causes, you may want to consider a nutrient deficiency. So where's the best place to start when you're investigating this? When a plant has a nutrient deficiency, deficiency, symptoms will either show up on the older leaves or the newer leaves, depending on how mobile the nutrient is. This is a great place to start when trying to determine what nutrient your plant is deficient in. Deficiencies of a mobile nutrient, like nitrogen or phosphorus, will first show up on older leaves. And this happens because as the plant prioritizes new growth, it actually pulls the nitrogen from the older tissues. On the other hand, deficiencies of an immobile nutrient, like calcium, will first show up on the newer growth. This is because immobile nutrients cannot easily move around the plant. So the plant cannot pull the nutrients from the older leaves. And we do have a great chart on geekygreenhouse.com. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. So let's get into the nutrients that your plant may be deficient in. By far, nitrogen is the most commonly deficient nutrient in plants. This nutrient is not held in the soil for a very long time, and it's used in large quantities by actively growing plants. It is a mobile nutrient, so it will move out of those older leaves into the new leaves as supplies run low. The older leaves will become uniformly chlorotic and then eventually die off. The easiest way to fix this issue is by fertilizing. And for container plants with a nitrogen deficiency, a synthetic fertilizer will work just fine. The next nutrient I want to talk about is phosphorus. And depending on where you live, it is not uncommon to have an excess amount of phosphorus in your soil. Typically, phosphorus deficiencies happen due to the plant's inability to uptake the nutrient rather than there being a true deficiency in the soil. Plants then in turn respond to this stress by producing more anthocyanins, and this shows up as a reddish purple color on older leaves. The newer growth may not be discolored, but you may see smaller than normal leaves. And it is worth noting that too much sun exposure can also cause purple leaves, but this typically shows up on the new growth rather than the old growth. If you suspect a phosphorus deficiency, you want to be mindful of your temperatures. Too cold of air or too cold of soil can make nutrient uptake more difficult. Plants may also have difficulty accessing phosphorus if your soil is too alkaline or too acidic. So a nutrient deficiency is not always about adding more of that nutrient. Sometimes you have to correct things like the pH or your watering habits as well. Potassium deficiency will show up as brown or yellow discoloration at the tips and leaf edges of your older leaves. You may also see a metallic or bronze sheen on your leaves or necrotic dead spots. Yellowing is typically non-uniform with the leaf veins of the plant remaining green as the tissue surrounding the veins turns yellow. This is called intervenal chlorosis. If you suspect that you may have a potassium deficiency in your garden, which we actually did, you want to be mindful of your watering habits. Increased soil moisture helps to facilitate the uptake of potassium. And like us, you may need to treat with a potassium fertilizer if necessary. Magnesium is a mobile nutrient necessary for the production of chlorophyll in plants. Deficiency causes intravenal chlorosis on older leaves. Chlorosis begins at the tips of the older leaves and eventually progresses towards the center of the leaf while the veins remain green. You may also see small brown spots or your leaves curling upwards. 
So like I said, many nutrient deficiencies tend to look very much alike, and this can be tricky with diagnosis. Also, too much potassium can also inhibit the uptake of magnesium. This is sometimes seen in tomato plants when gardeners use a fertilizer that is marketed for tomatoes and really high in potassium. Epsom salts are a very easy way to treat a magnesium deficiency in the garden, though many gardeners add Epsom salts to the garden not really knowing why they're doing it, so we only recommend this if you have a true deficiency. Next, I want to talk about calcium. Calcium is an immobile nutrient, so a deficiency will show up on the newer, younger leaves. A calcium deficiency can also manifest as blossom end rot. Blossom end rot is a pretty common issue that can happen in the garden. This can be due to lack of calcium in the soil, but it is more frequently due to irregular watering. Lack of water interferes with the availability of calcium to the plant. You, so you want to be mindful of your watering habits and keep soil evenly moist at all times. You can also add mulch to help improve water retention. Also be mindful of the pH of your soil. If your soil is too acidic, you can add lime as well as calcium and magnesium. We typically don't recommend using a calcium foliar spray to target a calcium deficiency because it is an immobile nutrient so it doesn't move around the plant very easily. Therefore it's better to target the roots and feed the plant that way. Iron deficiencies in plants manifest as intravenal chlorosis on newer leaves and it often affects acid loving plants like blueberries. In alkaline soils iron becomes unavailable and you'll see that intravenal yellowing on the newer leaves. Adding iron will typically not resolve this situation and the pH of your soil needs to be addressed to correct this. Now, of course, there are other nutrients that your plant can be deficient in. It's very important to address nutrient deficiencies in the garden because even if your plant is deficient in only one nutrient, it is enough to restrict the growth and development of that plant. And addressing a nutrient deficiency is not always about adding more of that nutrient to the soil. Sometimes it involves managing other factors like the pH of your soil or your watering habits or environmental conditions. Let us know in the comments if you found on your soil test that you were deficient in any nutrients and what you did to remedy the problem. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.